You remember that one time when my friend Matt came out and Ken Jackson was here and we were doing leg presses and we were going really hard and we're right in the middle of a set and we hear him puking and it was the weirdest sounding puke ever. But this guy, remember, he just kept filming while he was puking. It was amazing. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about now. That's the one. <laughs> That's why I kept trying to find the video on forever and I couldn't find it. And I had to ask you, and you said you have to search for mystery, mystery set. Mystery set. And what I remember about that is I didn't even know the guy puked until after we were done with all the leg presses. Yeah. And he's like, man, because he was filming the set. Yeah. He's like, man, I apologize. You know, I wasn't able to keep the camera steady, you know, but he. <laughs> He didn't miss a set. No. He did the whole rest of the training session. Yeah, he just, he just got, And it was a lot. I mean, it wasn't like Evans, but it was a lot. Yeah, that was the sound of it when you hear it on the playback. It's like a gargling. It's just the weirdest sounding pew, but man, he came back like a champ. He jumped, oh, right. Yeah. I he didn't jumped know. right back in. He wiped his mouth off, jumped right back in, and just kept going. Mm -hmm. Matt Kuba. And yeah, yeah, that, yeah, I remember that now. So I remember the first time I did those... <laughs> dynamic speed benches so you guys took me over to london groveport road 665 yep we were in a garage and i remember there was three benches so your first bench had the top four guys the strongest guys and the second bench you were probably on the first one mm -hmm. the second bench had the next four and then the third bench had the lat the weakest four and i was literally number 12 mm -hmm. like 12 guys were allowed to bench in there, and I was number 12. I barely well, it was, it was the 500-pound plus bench, the 400-pound plus bench, than everybody else. Yeah, so I think at the time I was doing a little over four, but I fell out into the weak group. Because mm -hmm. Joe McCoy was in there. He was the 181-pounder, and he was benching more than me, and mm -hmm. I was the 220-pounder. But I was the weak guy, so mm -hmm. I, remember that, I remember that garage. It's interesting that... Um, that you were allowed to go out there for one thing because because <laughs> i'm so weak well no it's when <laughs> when i first came to west side it was actually before i moved to columbus and i was making trips up louie told me to come up to bench and so i came up and the bench was on a sunday so i went to their gym which on the time was on Demerst and it was still a commercial gym and he had a back area that was for the powerlifting that had um police tape over it so you couldn't go back there unless you're that <clears throat> so i'm there on sunday and i'm waiting 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 and a small group of guys came in and they weren't the guys that I knew from the meets. They're just these other guys. And I'm like, well, what the hell, you know? And then Doris comes in and I'm like, I'm supposed to be here to, you know, bench with Lou and everybody. Like, oh no, they don't bench here. They bench out, you know, Tim Van Horn. So I'm like, I don't even know who Tim Van Horn is. I, I don't even know what this is. So then Chuck come in later because they did their accessory work. And I come to find out I'm not allowed to bench out there because you need a 500 pound bench or an elite total. And I had both but I didn't do it at Westside. Uh -huh. So even when I moved to Columbus, I wasn't allowed to go out there until I had a 500 pound bench while being in Westside. So I jumped in a meet real quick, you know, and, and did the 500 so I could go out there to Van Horn's bench. But that, so Louie had a lot of things like that yeah. to where you kind of had to earn your way into different things. So even when you were out there, there was the, the 400 pound bench, which was in the middle, then there was a bench 500 were over here. And then the others, which is the elite lifters, were out there. So you had to earn your way out there. Then there was kind of the benches that you were in. But the benches were mainly because it was speed work. Yeah. So you had to move fast. Yeah. And the most people we would ever have might be five. Yeah. So you wanted this. The, the bar was always moving because other people changed the weight. So you yeah. had somebody behind, one person on each side, the lifter, and then somebody and in waiting. Rotate. So it just moves, moves, moves. So yeah. five people, you're still getting probably 30, 45 seconds. One thing that's getting real popular uh, is the, we kind of lay on the floor and then those lying extensions with dumbbells, you kind of rest pause. And I see mm -hmm. all these guys doing that now, and I've been doing it myself. But um, if memory serves me correctly, like I remember Kenny Patterson at Westside doing like 100 pound dumbbells on those. Yeah, it was a little different though, because we would do rolling extensions. So they'd come down, it hit your shoulder, then you would let it roll. You let the dumbbell roll, which stretched the tricep. So what you're doing is you're taking it straight back. 
yeah. you know, two there. So I was good at those. Kenny was really good at those. So Kenny would probably use 130s, 140s. You know, my best is I think 120s for five, you know, and the hundreds are for like eights and stuff like that. But it's a trick though, because the, uh, the hundreds weren't as long. Right, so the hundreds, you're actually getting this greater range of motion, yeah. right? So as the dumbbell gets bigger, your range of motion is getting shorter, gotcha. right? But then it gets too big, it starts cranking your wrist too much. Yeah. But yeah, we did those. That was probably, while I was there, the most popular, is that the word? The most popular tricep exercise, yeah. extensions wise. Yeah. I mean, we still had the push downs and the, you know, the presses and stuff like that. But everybody did those. You just yeah. fell on the floor, did them, yeah. came back up. Those were great. I love those. Yeah, the pre-stretch and the, the yeah, those were, that was a good one. And Kenny was super, super, super strong on those. And he was benching over 700 and what, the 220s back then? Yes. You know, I don't know if he got into the eight, but it's, he might've got into the eights. But aside from all that, because people aren't going to understand the shirts and all that other stuff, he was a 640, 650 raw bencher. I saw him miss in one of the Arnold Classics when they had the bench bash. I saw him bomb out with six, somewhere between 620 and 640 on that Saturday. And then that Sunday, because we never missed a workout. So if the guys benched, if we had a meet on Saturday, we still did speed bench on Sunday, <laughs> right? So he came in on that day and worked up and did a 640 raw. <laughs> the next day the next day right without the shirt so that, a lot of that's just kind of getting used to the shirt and everything else but that was an interesting one because a lot of the people that were at the classic were also in the gym they couldn't believe what yeah. the hell this was you know right. this guy just bombed out of a meet and the next day he does it yeah yeah hell of a venture crazy so on squat days when we would do our eight sets we didn't really like intro workout stuff wasn't a thing back then i mean i think people uh, maybe they were, I mean, I mean, aminos were obviously around, but <laughs> I remember rolling in with chocolate milk. I always had my one liter of chocolate milk and I would drink that in between sets. And there was no air conditioning. It was no, the middle was of the terrible. summer. It was brutally hot. And, you know, the eight sets of two doesn't sound like much, but when you're flying and you're, you're pushing as hard as you can, it's actually, it feels like a cardio workout. Sometimes you get out of breath, you're sweating. And I just remember like I would just chug a, chug a drink of milk do my set, we're racking the weights, chug a drink and think of milk, and then like Joe McCoy and Arnold were like, what are you doing drinking chocolate milk? And I was like, man, I don't know. You know, that's funny because when I think back on this, I'm trying to like remember what we even drank and we didn't drink anything. You know, when you, when you think of what we know now, yeah. you know, compared to what we knew then, I mean, it was hot. I mean, you couldn't Real. chalk people's back because the shirts were so sweaty. It was just like cake that was on there and you could feel the heat just radiating you know, off you. And I remember Louie would run next door and buy Gatorades, you know, and you couldn't drink those because it just, it was like too sugary, too, it just, it didn't, it wasn't palatable when it was that freaking hot. Yeah. And I don't, I don't really ever remember any of us even bringing in water. You know, it's, <laughs> I, I do remember going to that crappy bathroom and sticking my head under the faucet to like sip, you know, the water, like when you're in the bathroom, yeah. you take a, you know, <laughs> I remember that, but holy cow, now I wonder if we, uh, if we just would have drank water, if we would have been a little better. Because I can remember doing speed work and going outside because people see the videos of me vomiting. Now I was vomit just doing speed work just because that's how yeah. I am. It's just yeah. the force of all that. And there's, it's just so dry. I couldn't even put, I couldn't even spit, you know, because it was like old, old, like high school football days where you're so dry. Yeah. And now I'm thinking, what an idiot, man. You just needed to bring in a gallon of water maybe that's or milk. About, maybe, that, here, I'm talking about, maybe that's why people were tearing stuff. They're too dehydrated. Yeah. I, wow. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Speaking of hot, like at your old location, obviously um, super hot in the summers, 100 degrees inside the warehouse where we trained. And we actually used to bring ice packs in hmm. because we were scared we'd have a stroke. Like, yeah. That was bad. People think we're kidding. Like, we're not kidding. No, that was bad. So that was hot. So bring in a cooler with ice packs. And after each hard set, we would sit there with an ice pack on our neck. And then it would warm up real quick. So you get rid of it. Then the next set, you get another ice pack. Yeah, but see, I knew how to hydrate then because we had the big-ass bottles, too. What I, the one thing I did learn that I still do now is um, I fill up a spray bottle with water. And I spray my face and spray my body and stand in front of the fan. You know, that, that helps a ton too, where anybody that trains in a garage or a warehouse that's super, super hot in the summer, they all are. I mean, most, yeah. they just are. Yeah. And get a spray bottle, spray yourself, man, yeah. stand in front of the, 
man, that helps a lot too. But for these, because it was, um, the sessions were brutal. We, we had, there were packs for the back of the neck, packs for, I had a bunch of them. I had a yeah. cooler that we had out there. Yeah, I, I remember going to CBS and I look at the packs like, man, that's a good forehead one. <laughs> Like, this one's good for your neck, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. This is going to sit real good because you don't want to hold it. Yeah. You, know, you just want to sit there. You know, one of the things I struggle with when people like, I want to do what you and Dave did. One of the things I struggle with is I'm scared that people do some of the stuff we did because, like, every leg workout, we would start with a huge, after we did our leg curls, a huge drop set on squats. And I'm so scared people, if they try it, they're going to hurt themselves. Like, we would go mm. up to, you know, five plates and chains, almost go to failure obviously you're not going to failure but close strip the chains do more reps strip a plate and we would do like i'm a little scared to have people do some of the stuff we used to do well i think that because i have people say the same thing and i think a lot of times they they fail to understand the context you know so before we even started doing any of this stuff we were both in, you were in better shape than i was for that kind of stuff but i was still in decent shape because i always did stupid shit you know the drop sets and stuff like that it took a couple it took a year before things really got out of hand i mean you can say it was out of hand maybe one challenge set was yeah. really all it was maybe once a week yeah right and there was two sessions a week i believe we were doing at the time and then it might have been, it might have been once uh, twice a month maybe yeah then over a year then it became maybe two or three challenge sets in one training session yeah. which is brutal it's brutal Very, as hell yeah. but if they understand the context of that's over 50 some training sessions yeah you know then it, and they also don't understand that they're it's under a very very close watchful eye it's not like we're just doing the it's not like when i'm doing my set you're just in a corner breathing and not paying attention what's going on yeah. we understand that this was ridiculously kind of stupid but there's there's I don't even know if you can give me a solid reason why, you know, if it really helped, but it was, it is what it is, is what we did. But while you were doing a set, my focus isn't like on watching how many reps you're doing and all this and all this. I'm watching the breathing. I'm watching yeah. your eyes. I'm watching yeah. your joints. I'm watching all this other stuff. And they're not seeing the sets where it's like, stop. You know, where you, yeah. you had to stop doing a strip set because your back was starting to get a little compromised. Yes, yes. There were a lot of those. Yes. Right? And so they're not seeing that. They're not seeing the sets where, you know, you'd have to step in and say, that's enough. Yeah. You know, because you see that there's a risk benefit to everything. We are, we are playing that yeah. real close. But they're not seeing, you know what I'm saying? They're not yeah. seeing that other part. Yeah, and I, now that you mention it, I do remember, like, you're always telling me, stop. As soon as my form would hit a certain... The technique would go a certain way you'd always be like that's it yes Don't hurt now what we would find though is if that always happened on a certain exercise we just didn't use that exercise anymore. yeah we found something else so that's where the chain deadlifts really came from remember it was chain dead actually yeah. it was deadlifts and it was chain deadlifts and it was elevated chain deadlifts. and then it was block pulled because we have chain. to do this in a way that the back for you your yeah. back was not going to be an issue in any way whatsoever yeah but we can still do everything what we want to do so we actually were really smart about our stupidity <laughs> <laughs> well you know that's yeah that's a good point i don't think people realize like we were like okay let's go as hard as we can without getting injured like that was the goal mm -hmm. let's go as hard as we can and not get hurt and minimize the risk as and much as risk. possible yeah. remember when we had cattle prods i remember where did that prod. idea come from because it started with a taser Right. Oh, so yeah, you, yeah. you had this idea that you wanted to do this taser thing. The taser squats. Right. I've been tased and I've been cattle prod and there's a big difference between the two, right? <laughs> yeah. So I kind of realized you didn't know that there was a difference between the two. So I pivoted really hard, really fast to the cattle prod because the cattle prod sounds way worse. Yeah. And it sounds better like, oh, a cattle prod, right? A taser is going to put you on the ground. Yeah. You know? The cattle prod just looks like it will put you on the ground. So that's kind of where it started. And then I bought the cattle prods before, because you were going to talk to a, a, yeah, a police officer, a police officer yeah. friend of yours for the taser. Yeah. And I'm like, I have to get these cattle prods before he comes out here with some dude with yeah, the taser. Yeah, I was ready to go with the because taser. Because if we were to squat and get tased while we're squatting, somebody's going to get seriously hurt. <laughs> and you, this was not like just joking around. You were seriously going down Super this route. Super serious. So I ordered, I jumped on Amazon, I believe, and ordered the cattle prods immediately. The next day delivery, prime, I didn't care what it was. <laughs> so I got them out. 
And that's how it started. Well, but I remember thinking this will be a cool video because if you get tased, that's like your central nervous system. You should <laughs> like it should stimulate your CNS, right? You get so what we'll do is we'll get tased, we'll get up and we'll immediately squat. Yeah. 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 So, it's so uh, meathead it's so it's so oh, meathead it's ridiculous. It was well listen, well you had the idea that you were gonna do the cattle prod or taser in an ice bath. Yeah, that was that was not a good one either. Like that would literally <laughs> kill you. <laughs> that was your idea. Yeah, that was my idea. So Yeah. That was good times. One of the things about the cattle prods was it depends, like if you had on sweatpants or just your skin, like mm -hmm. the zap would be noticeably different. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean if, if you had sweatpants on it's like no big deal, right? Yeah. But if you had on those um I call them the pantyhose things, but the, the spandex pants. And you hit that, man, it's got a little bit more hot, a little more pop to it. And then also when you did, we did one cattle prod, then we got to where we were doing two at once. Yeah, so we hit the lats. Yeah, we did the lats. Seal row. Yeah. I remember that one, it was a seal row and you hit both lats and there yeah. you go.